So what does the new org chart look like? Well, th this is clearly art, and I can't sit with you here and give you rules for creating the next org chart. That comes from experience and experiential learning. It's an art, it's not a skill. Uh, but we do have this tool we call the skill set matrix, which shows the uh, generically the five standard business disciplines that people grow up in in their career. Product development, you know, can be software development or it can be engineering or designing bridges or whatever. Marketing is, is obvious. Um, finance is obvious. Sales is, you know, is a little less obvious because it varies a lot from company to company, B2B or B2C or B2B2C. Whatever your company does is, is what should be filled in there. And then operations, you know, is kind of where most of the rubber hits the road in delivering the product. And, and there's four levels. And of course, this is a spectrum. It's not magically one day you move into the next level. It's a spectrum of growth. But what we'll talk about what's required to move, you know, really in this thing from right to left and, and, and um, move up the skill set matrix. But strategic planning drives the org chart. When you know the staffing, that's required at a certain revenue level to deliver a certain amount of your product or service, that ought to be in a simulator, in a spreadsheet that calculates all that and has all the right ratios, which are in your dashboard. The, the ratio of customer service people to customers is something you need to know and it's something you need to watch. So that's a critical KPI for a customer service department or an operations department, right? So a lot of this is coming from the, the strategic plan and the risks. Who can you promote from within? Um, it's always better. And I think, and, and this is just an off the cuff intuitive guess, but I think you ought to try to at least promote 50%. And 70% would be better of people internally and the new people coming in are, are 30%. And so if you can grow internally 50 to 70% of your people, you're going to have less brain drain. You're going to have less people upset. You're going to set an example that more people are going to understand, hey, if I work hard here, I'm going to have opportunity to get promoted. They're not just always going to go out and hire someone over me with you know, more experience than me, right? So people want to see that opportunity. So promoting from within is a big deal. And it ought to be part of your culture and, and talked about, obviously, posting jobs internally and having discussions, both good and bad, with people that may or may not qualify for those new roles. And, and this skill set matrix is sort of one way to show that to them very objectively. I would say that both of these things, what's that org chart look like? needs to be known by the CEO at least, and ideally the whole C-level team, three to six months in advance. Um, we believe that for a company to scale, it needs three key people, the visionary, the operator, and the sales slash marketing person, depending on what your business is. It might be you know, online sales, which is more about marketing because the sale is done on the page, on the website page, right? Versus you know, B2B sales, which is obviously a whole different animal on the opposite end of the spectrum where you might be selling six-figure products with a, a Miller Hyman or other solution selling or uh, veto type selling sales process. There's many models uh, and most companies should integrate and design a custom sales process. What else is needed in the web chart? Well, this is a very complex issue. It's got to be thought about. You should build the org chart. You should live with it for a while. You know, it's got feel driven because it's art, not science. It's uh, it's gestalt, as the the psychologist would say, because there are so many factors that would be weighted differently by different people: personality versus skill set versus commitment versus what you'll have to pay them. You know, all of those things are are going to have to come in, and that's just the top few in deciding who's going to get promoted to run a new department or run a new a division of the business as it grows. And you've got to be thinking of, you know, how committed are they to their own growth and their own personal development and their career, because only those people are going to be able to be promoted in, you know, let's say the majority or, or you know, half of the promotions that are going to happen during a reorg. If you're reorging every six months, obviously you can't promote that person most of the time, every single time, because they're going to rapidly 
outgrow their skill set. And then you get the Peter principle, right, where people get promoted to the level of their incompetence. And because they were a great software engineer, you decide to make them a software engineering manager, which is the worst thing you ever did because they don't have the people skills that's required for a manager, even though they were a great software engineer. So that person might become a software architect very well, but they may not want to or be capable of being a, a people person and a, and a manager. This is a very valuable tool. We have a whole course on how to use this because there's three different ways to look at it. And as I mentioned earlier, this is actually three-dimensional. This level is based on the stage of development you're at and something that people ignore that's very important is what stage company did they acquire a skill set at? The extreme example of that is obviously the VP of marketing at IBM is not anywhere near the same skill set as the VP of marketing at a startup or a, you know an early stage startup, right? And there's a spectrum where they're becoming more manager, more planning, more strategy and less execution, and they're getting away from the details as they, they go up that curve, right? So you've got to think about that. So this 20 cells here is actually 100 cells in our five-stage development model of companies growing. And as you shift gears, you've really got to think about what that person has done in that size company, because most people can only stretch one or at most two stages of development. Because if you've got all your experience in a startup, you're not going to do as well, at least initially in a, in a big company environment that's very bureaucratic. Who's investing in developing themselves? I, I think this is one of the most important things. You know, it's about mentality. It's about commitment. It's about self-actualization, someone's willingness to invest in themselves to grow. And I'm a nut about this. You know, I've been doing personal development since my father introduced it to me when I was 13 or something like that. And, you know, I went to the Tony Robbins firewalks and, you know, did all of that stuff, which is, is good for your mindset. But it's really something you've got to apply to every area of business. And, and to be a CEO, you have to be able to manage and know sales, marketing, finance, product development, and operations, all of these things well, in addition to legal issues, HR issues, hiring. Um, you know, and of course, a lot of that, you, you can't be an expert at everything, and you've got to have complementary people on the team. 